Hello, mes amis. Je suis moi, Creole Lady Mamalade, and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, beyond the new. So today is a very exciting video for me. It is a four generation, count of four generation DNA test result video for my grandmother, my mother, myself, and my oldest daughter. So we are going to be diving in and breaking down the DNA results, the 23andMe DNA results of four generations of Louisiana ladies and my family. So yes, it is just gonna be me for this video. I do plan on making another where I sit down and interview and talk to them and get their experiences and all that good stuff. But this video is gonna be long enough as it is because I'm gonna be really taking a deep dive into these results and breaking everything down. So it's easier to just kind of do that by myself. But I wanna give the disclaimer that I am not a genealogist. I am not a geneticist. I am not a professional in any of those capacities. I'm just a girl who has an interest in these things and DNA results and genetics and how it all works and whatnot. So it's just me and my non-professional analysis of our results. I created this not only as, you know, not only just to have our results chronicled for our family and, you know, my future generations and what have you, but also to serve as an example of a quintessential Louisiana Creole family. Like I said, we're all Louisiana ladies. We're all born in New Orleans. And um, I just kind of want to show, like there's a lot of confusion about what Creole even is, what it means, what it looks like. So I just want to show not just myself, but multiple generations of my family and what that consists of as Creole people. Um, now my grandmother, she's biracial, but my mom, myself, and my daughter, we are all Louisiana Creoles. Um, not that biracial people can't also be Creole, but she's <laughs> she's a non-Creole biracial, whereas the rest of us are Creole. Um, but, um, and, and I'm not saying that all Creoles are mixed either. I have to throw that disclaimer out there. I have to throw it out with every video. And even though I do it, I'm still gonna end up with comments. Not all Creoles are mixed. Even though I'm saying this right now, I guarantee that comment will still be in the comments. Um, <laughs> but um, my family, for my family, we are Creoles of color and that is what the mixed race Creoles were called. So I tend to kind of see things and show things from a mixed race Creole perspective. So anywho, yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm putting this out there to show as a real life example of what a modern Creole family consists of. But uh, anywho, let's get this video going okay so first i'm just going to show you guys what our basic overall ethnicities are before we dig deeper into the exact racial composition of everybody so as you can see here my grandmother is half african-american and half nicaraguan her mother was an african-american woman from new orleans and her father was from nicaragua he migrated to new orleans in the 1940s um, and as you can see here i have mestizo in parentheses and that's just to show the exact type of nicaraguan that her father was because we know latinos can come in many different uh, varieties so this is just to show you know that she was I would say biracial because her parents are two different races, but technically tri-racial and bi-ethnic. So next we have my mom and her father was a mixed race, Louisiana Creole, and her mother, as we know, half African American, half Nicaraguan. So that makes my mom half Louisiana Creole, a quarter African American, and a quarter Nicaraguan. And if you're wondering why I'm distinguishing her Louisiana Creole heritage from her African American heritage, it's because they are literally two distinct ethnic groups. Louisiana Creoles are a Franco-Latin ethnic group. Many of us, but not all, are also of African ancestry, while African Americans are an Afro-Anglo ethnic group. So we are sister communities in that we both belong to the African diaspora. We are both American groups now, ever since Creoles became American, but ethnically, we are distinct so then now we have me and this is where things start to get a little bit tricky um so as you can see for me i put louisiana creole just kind of big in the middle because that's kind of the main thing for me my dad is fully creole my mom has an entire creole parent so i you know i have three creole grandparents that is what i'm primarily made of and my grandmother is mixed so she doesn't come in and add like you know this whole big lump of something else she's mixed <laughs> Um, so, you know, I have three fully Creole parents and then I have, you know, my biracial or bi-ethnic, however you want to call her grandmother. So that's why I just have Creole in the middle, but I do still list, you know, what my great grandparents were, you know, kind of 
right outside of Creole. So that's why I have, you know, an eighth Nicaraguan, an eighth African American, and an eighth Cajun. And that's because, as, as you've seen, my mom has an African American grandmother and a Nicaraguan grandfather, and my dad has a Cajun grandmother. So now we have my daughter. Her father is African American. He's from New Orleans too, but he's not Creole. Um, so that's why I have her listed as half African American and half Louisiana Creole, give or take, because we know that I have, you know, three Creole grandparents and the one, you know, half Latina, half African American grandmother. But you know, by the time that gets to my daughter, oh, what am I gonna say? You know, she's one sixteenth Nicaraguan. I, I feel like it's just easier to say, you know, since I'm majority Creole, to just say, look, half Creole on my side half African-American on his side. So without further ado, let's get into these results. So first, I'm just gonna read you our overall continental results, um, just so you can see you know, on the screen, all four of us and everything just lined up and how it all compares and, and what have you. And then we're gonna circle back and then we're gonna break them all down and we're gonna analyze each region, well, maybe not each region, but you know, I'm gonna an uh, analyze everything a little bit more in depth and specifically. Okay, so we're gonna start with Sub-Saharan African. So for my grandmother, she is 48.2% Sub-Saharan African. My mom is 47.3%. I am 51.4%. And my daughter is 67.9%. So my grandma, my mom and I were all roughly in a 50% range. And then you have my daughter, she is pretty much two thirds Sub-Saharan African. All right, moving on to European. So my grandma, she is 39.6%. My mom is 46.2%. I am 46.7%. And my daughter is 29.4%. So me and my mom are actually the most similar in the European range. Mm -hmm. And then my mom and my grandma are most similar in the Sub-Saharan African range, though I'm not too far off, I'm like, what, 4% off? But yeah, still, that's that's interesting. Uh, so that puts me and my mom basically in a 50-50 range, pretty much. Um, especially my mom, because she's literally 47% one, 46% the other, so she's there the same amount, pretty much. And then, uh, so my daughter, she's like a third European, two thirds Sub-Saharan African. So that's the majority of everything she's got going on right there. I am me and my mom, really, <laughs> racially. Um, but let's keep going anyway. Um, so Indigenous American, my grandma, 9.2%. My mom, 5.5%. I believe her ancestry results were like 7%. It was either 6 or 7%. Um, me 1.6 percent and so this is how I can tell like I really just didn't inherit much of the indigenous from our Nicaraguan background because my sister she's on ancestry and my sister got three percent uh, indigenous American which is you know pretty much half of what my mom has so I didn't get half my sister did get half but I got a smidget more Spanish so I'm giving away I'm giving away results already, but I mean, my ancestry results are already up here anyway. But yeah, basically, I got a bit more Spanish from our Latina side, and my sister got a little bit more indigenous. Um, and then we get to my daughter, and she is 1.3%. So she's clearly getting a tiny bit from her dad because she has basically the same amount that I have. Um, so she's getting half from me, and she had to have gotten some from him because if she got half from me, it's not even a percent. Um, so yeah, we can see here, my grandma is the one who definitely is different from the rest of us, but I mean, she's the one who's half Nicaraguan, so it would make sense that she would have a decent, decent bit of indigenous American. So that's super cool. All right, and so now we're gonna go down to this category, Western, Asian, and North African. So my grandma, 1.1%, my mom, 0.3%, my daughter, 0.4%. I skipped over me because I have none. Interesting. I don't. I don't have any. Um, and then now East Asian. My grandma point two percent. My mom point two percent. My daughter point two percent. Oh wait, no, no. I skipped a line. Okay. Well, yeah. My daughter point two percent and me point one percent. So that's our East Asian. And now Central and South Asian. My grandma point four percent. My daughter point two percent. And I skipped me and my mom because we don't have any. So that's interesting. My grandma and my daughter has it. So my daughter must have got it from her dad, or I, I don't know. And then, you know, unassigned. My grandma, 1.3%, my mom, 0.5%, me, 0.2%, and my daughter, 
0.6%. That's super cool. That's super cool to see how that all worked, but it's gonna get more interesting when we break it down by the regions to see exactly how regionally this worked, be that my grandmother is half Latina and the rest of us have a lot more Creole background. Um, but it's interesting because my grandma is half African-American, half Latina, and my daughter is half African-American, half Louisiana Creole. So they're both kind of on these ends. And then me and my mom sit right in between with a lot of Creole. So um, yeah, let's get into those. So now let's look at the specific breakdown. So first we have my grandma and my mom labeled as great grandmother and grandmother. Um, so for overall West African, my grandma has 42.5% and my mom has 39.3%. So my grandma has 25.2% Nigerian, my mom 18.5%. Uh, for Senegambian Ghanaian, my grandma has 7.7% and my mom has 5.2%. Uh, my mom is showing the Fula and Wolof peoples, but my grandma's gets even more specific and also shows the Mandinka people as a part of her genetic groups. And then it further delves into the country matches and says uh, Gambia, Senegal, and Guinea. Well, Gambia and Senegal are highly likely matches and guinea is a likely match so we can see where my grandma's is getting like a little bit more in depth than any of the rest of ours um you know because she is closer to the original source than the rest of us are um so then also my mom has ghanaian library ghanaian liberian and sierra leonean 7.6 percent uh does my okay my grandma has that too at 6.8 percent and then uh, broadly West African for my grandma, 2.8%. For my mom, it is 8%. So I noticed that my grandma's broadly number is smaller than my mom's. I wonder if that's because she's, you know, older, a generation older and closer to the source. Because, um, you know, the closer you are to the, the full race, uh, you know, the full source, the um the easier these tests can pick things up and the less trace ancestry and broadly this and broadly that you'll have so i just i wonder if it's because my grandma's a generation older than my mom that she has slightly less uh, broadly west african than my mom um okay so now where are we congolese and southern east african 5.4 percent from my grandma and 7.2 percent from my mom so then we have Angolan and Congolese, my grandma, 5.4%. So that's, okay, so my grandma's is all in this one Angolan and Congolese uh, category, 5.4%. Um, and for my mom, it's 6% for her. And she also has Southern East African, 0.4%, and broadly Congolese and Southeast African, 0.8%. Again, my grandma doesn't have a broad category here. Um, I'm wondering if it's because she's a generation closer to the source. Um, and so then we have Northern East African uh, for my mom only. And she has broadly Northern East African 0.1%. And then so we have broadly Sub-Saharan African 0.7% for my mom, 0.3% for my grandma. Again, my grandma has less broad uh, ancestry than my mom now let's move on to my daughter and i so i have an overall 42.8 percent west african and my daughter has 60.4 percent west african so for nigerian i have 16.7 percent and she has 23.4 percent now i have a specific region for nigeria that my mom and my grandma didn't have i have anambra i guess that comes from my dad's side because my mom and my grandma don't have it and then you know my daughter's a generation younger than i am so it's probably just not showing on hers um so then we have ghanaian liberian and sierra leonean i have 10.7 percent she has 22 percent um senegambian and ghanaian i have 5.9 percent and she has 6.4%. And hers is showing the Fula and Wolof peoples like my mom and my grandma. So I'm wondering, did it like skip me? Is it just not showing in me and it's showing in her? Or I wonder if that's coming from her dad, maybe. 
um because i imagine he has more he has more than I do so it maybe it's stronger on his side and, and you know she's picking up on that um and then broadly West African she has 8.6 percent and I have 9.5 percent but even though it says broadly West African I still have Mauritania uh I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that but I still have that as a region so I'm not quite sure how that's broadly you know how it's broad if they haven't narrowed down to a specific region but anywho so i have that 9.5 percent so then we go down to congolese and southern east african i'm at 7.9 percent and my baby is at seven percent um angolan and congolese i have 7.1 percent she has 5.9 percent um southern east african 0.3 percent for me um oh, i lost my place oh she doesn't have that on hers and broadly congolese and southern east african 0.5 percent for me 1.1 percent for my daughter and then for broadly sub-saharan african i have 0.7 percent and she has 0.5 percent Alrighty, so now let's get into these european results so we're going to start with my grandma and my mom and right off what i see is that my mom seems to have a lot more going on than my grandma and to me that's probably because my mom is coming from two mixed race parents who both have a good bit of european ancestry so she's getting a lot of tidbits of this and tidbits of that from both parents whereas my grandma she's she only has one non-black parent so she's getting most of her european from that non-black parent and by him being latino we know that most of it is going to be coming from southern europe so that's why if we look uh, on the first line for southern european my grandma it has 36.6 percent southern european ancestry so out of her 39.6 percent 36.6 percent of it is southern european and i'm almost certain that most if not all of that is coming from her latino father um and then my mom she has 29.1 percent southern european and that's because she also has her creole father that she's getting other european from so um so yeah this is like it's lining up perfectly so if we break down that southern european my grandma has 35.2 percent spanish and portuguese my mom has 23.5 percent and then my mom also has italian 1.1 percent and they specify malta and south central sicily so perhaps that's coming from her dad um and i did go and look at the uh what do you call that parental breakdowns of like what you, what you're getting inheriting from each parent so i was able to do that for my mom i can't do that for my grandma because her parents are not on 23 and me but I was able to do it for my mom because my grandma's on 23 and me. So I did see that some Southern European is coming from my grandfather. And that makes sense because Creoles do typically have a little Spanish ancestry or, you know, that Southern European, that Iberian ancestry um, as well. So when you have that Italian just kind of gets slipped into there too. Um, and then my mom also has 0.2% Sardinian. And then so for broadly Southern European, we have 4.3% for my mom and 1.4% for my grandma. So as we go into the Northwestern European, my grandma only has 1.3% of that. And I'm gonna guess that that's coming from her African-American mom. So what that tells me is that my great grandma was close to purity um so if my grandma is getting you know 1.3 percent northwestern european from her and that's just a guess uh, latinos can have a drop of northwestern european as well but her, her my great grandma who's african-american she has to have some european ancestry as well um so i'm gonna guess that this is coming from her so if my grandma's only getting 1.3 percent from her that leads me to believe my great grandma only has two or three percent european and that is extremely close to pure and this is also why i feel to believe my great grandmother was close to pure african because if you look at my grandma's ancestry timeline nigerian is the most recent country of ancestry that she has on her timeline and when you click on it, it says that she most likely had a parent, grandparent, or great-grandparent who was 100% Nigerian. 
This person was likely born between 1860 and 1920. So the fact that Nigerian is number one on her ancestry timeline, coupled with the fact that she only has 1.3% Northwestern European and 1.4% broadly European. So let's just say the broadly European also comes from her mom. So she at most got roughly 2.7% european ancestry from her mom so that tells me that her mom is roughly maybe six percent european you know at best um so that tells me her mom is close to pure african if she only has maybe six percent european ancestry that just kind of clues me in that my grandma likely did have a grandparent or a great-grandparent who came from Nigeria. Um, I know that parent is a possibility according to this timeline, but I know for a fact neither of her parents are from Nigeria. But I, this is giving me reason to believe that one of her parent, her grandparents or great grandparents were from Nigeria. So, um, so yeah, that's 1.3% Northwestern European for my grandma and 14.8% for my mom. So for my mom, she has 7.4% French and German. Um, and then they have, what is this, Flanders, Belgium, um, as like a specific region. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but I have, you know, I've traced our ancestors far enough to know that some of them came from France itself. Uh, so maybe some also came from Belgium. I don't know. But, um, so my grandma, 0.6% British and Irish, and then my mom has 1.6% British and Irish, uh, with England as a main region, as well as the UK and the Republic of Ireland. I accidentally skipped over my grandma Scandinavian here at 0.5%. And then we have broadly Northwestern European. 5.8% for my mom, 0.2% for my grandma. So for my mom, I'm guessing a lot of this broadly Northwestern European is going to be coming from like France. Um, that's just my guess, but just because my mom's uh, father was Creole, and because my grandma does not have a lot of Northwestern European at all, I'm guessing pretty much all of this is coming from my grandpa. And if it's coming from him, majority of it is going to be, you know, the typical Creole European. It's not labeled as Southern European, so it's not Spanish. So my guess is most of that is going to be French. Plus ancestry list, my mom is being 17% French. So 23 me probably just wasn't able to pinpoint it quite like ancestry did. And then broadly, oh no. And then we have Ashkenazi Jewish for my mom uh, at 0.4%, for my grandma 0.3%, and then overall broadly European 1.9% for my mom, 1.4% for my grandmother. Alrighty, so now let's break down me and my daughter's European ancestry. So starting with Southern European, I have 23% and she has 13%. I'm sure most if not all of that is coming from me. So for Spanish and Portuguese, I have 14.3% and she has 8.5%. And she also has specific regions in Spain, which are Madrid and North Central Spain. I find that interesting because me, my mom, and my grandma, none of us have specific Spanish regions. And she's not getting any Spanish from her dad. Like when I looked at her parental uh, inheritance or whatever, I think it's literally like 1.1% comes from her dad or something like that. So it's all coming from my side. So I'm not quite sure how her DNA is able to show specific regions when me, my mom, and my grandma uh, doesn't show that. So I don't know how confident I am in these specific regions. Um, just because my great grandpa is Nicaraguan, we know for sure he has Spanish ancestry, but I don't know how much I believe these specific regions if she's the only one you know if she's the only one that they were able to be detected in and you can correct me if i'm wrong i'm not sure if something can show up in like a child that didn't show up in a parent i do know that we can carry recessive genes so like two parents can have brown eyes and their child can have blue eyes because you know the parents carried the gene for it so i know like genetically things could show up in children that didn't show up in the parents but the parents still carried it it just didn't show so i don't know if that's how that works for something like this uh, that just doesn't sound right to me <laughs> so i don't know how much i trust that but yeah okay so she has 8.5 percent spanish and portuguese um italian i have 3.2 percent she has 2.4 percent and then broadly southern european i have 5.5 percent 
and she has 2.1% and my wild guess is that most of that broadly Southern European is probably Spanish. Um, just given what we know of, because my, my great grandfather was Nicaraguan, my uh, mother has Spanish on both her mom and her dad's side. And then I also have a little bit of Spanish on my dad's side. So I'm, he's, cause my dad's also Creole. Uh, so I'm just inclined to believe that most of this barley Southern European is Spanish. Okay, so next up we have Northwestern European. 21.1% for me and 13.3% for her. So for French and German, I have 12.1%. Again, Flanders, Belgium, which we saw in my mom's results as a, um, as a specific region. And then my daughter has 5% French and German with Netherlands as her specific region. And this brings me to another realization because we don't have Netherlands on our side. So when I was checking her parental inheritance thing, that's where I realized that she's getting 1.8% of her French and German from her dad's side. So perhaps the Netherlands is coming from his side maybe. Um, but that also made me think, oh, like he has a you know small amount of French on his side. And then it also made me think back to the 0.1% of Spanish. I know that's, that, that's, pra that's pretty much non-existent, but the fact that it showed up at all, if she got 0.1 from him, then it means he probably has 0.2. And I know that's so small that it could just be an accident and not even exist at all. But the fact that it even showed up um, along with, you know, her getting 0.3% overall Southern European from him and then the 1.8 French and German, all these little, t I know they're micro tiny amounts and as they stand on their own, they could be noise and not even exist. But because there's a culmination of a few of these tiny drops coming from his side, that does lead me to believe that his side also probably has some distant Creole ancestry because I, I know he's from New Orleans. His parents and grandparents are from Louisiana. Um, I don't know his family beyond that, where they're from. Um, but because I'm seeing these teeny tiny drops of like French and Southern European that have trickled over to her from his side, that does make me think that they do have at least some, you know, a little bit of Creole ancestry more distant within their family. So his family identifies as African-American. They, you know, they're not connected to being Creole at all. I don't even, they probably don't even know that this <laughs> tiny bit of French ancestry is even there. I'm the only weirdo who would know that because I love, you know, digging into these DNA tests and things. Um, so on their end, no, they don't identify as Creole. They probably are not even aware of any distant Creole ancestry. But just from me digging into my daughter's ancestry, I have the idea that they have some distant Creole lineage um, in their family. Um, so I'm gonna still stick with saying she's half African-American on his side, just because they're not connected to that identity at all. Um, but it's just interesting knowing that it does likely exist in small amounts, you know, farther back in his family tree, you know, on his side. Okay, next, British and Irish. I have 1.5% with England as a specific region, just like my mom. And my daughter also has 1.5% British and Irish, but she has Cumbria, United Kingdom as her specific region. I guess that comes from her dad's side. I don't even know what that is. And then so next we have broadly Northwestern European, 7.5% for me, 6.8% for her. And my wild guess again is that most of that is going to be French because I have, you know, French on both sides. Both of my parents are Creole, so I'm guessing most of that is French. Um, you know, for her, maybe some of that, maybe more of that could be like British and Irish because her dad's African-American. So, you know, for me, I feel like most of mine is probably French. For her, some might be French, some might be British and Irish, whatever the case. Um, and then what do we have next? Ashkenazi Jewish. I have 0.4%. I think my mom had that too. And she has 1.2%. So uh, I guess her dad has a little bit on his side. And then she also, she has something we don't have, Eastern European, 0.4%. So that has to be coming from her dad. That's interesting. That's super interesting, because that's not common. So I wonder how that got there. And then um, broadly European, I have 2.2% and she has 1.5%. 
that is interesting. And now let's dig into the last major component of our ancestry, maybe more major for some of us than others. But um, yeah, so our indigenous ancestry, let's get into that. So my grandmother got 9.2% indigenous American. My mom got 5.5% on ancestry, she got six or seven. Uh, for me, I only got 1.6%. And then my daughter, she's 1.3% indigenous. Um, so now if we break it down a bit, this is really cool that, um, good thing my mom and my grandma are on here because as you see me and my daughter, we have no specific, like it's so small, there's no further information. <laughs> it just says indigenous American. There's nothing else there uh, that they were able to pick up on. But as you can see, my mom and grandma, theirs comes with more information. So my mom, hers says Central Valley of Costa Rica. That's interesting. And Northern Nicaraguan Highlands and Los Maribios. And then so my grandma, I think hers get even more in depth. So she also has Northern Nicaraguan Highlands and Los Maribios. And West Nicaragua, I don't know what this word is. Xolotlan and Cosivolca. I'm going to have to look into those. But um my grandma's got really in-depth and specific and that's super cool so now we have knowledge of that because you know had it just been me and my daughter on here we wouldn't have known these specific things and um this all adds up with my great-grandfather being from nicaragua so this is super cool to know so now we're gonna dig into one category of ancestry that my grandmother has that didn't show up for any of the rest of us correction it did show up for my mom and daughter but it was in their traits ancestry so i overlooked it at first and that is western asian and north african aka your arab countries pretty much so on that category she has 1.1 percent very small but i find this in latinos a lot um they tend to have like a little drop of, you know, Arab uh, type ancestry. And I'm pretty certain that has to do with the Moors and, and Spain and, and all of that. Um, Cause I think, you know, Spaniards in general will probably have, you know, just a drop of Arab uh, from if you go far back enough. So in this category, she has 0.6% North African and 0.2% broadly Arab, Egyptian and Levantine and then 0.3% broadly Western Asian and North African. So that's pretty interesting that she was able to at least pick up that tiny bit of it. So for the rest of us, we know it's there in extremely minute amounts. So now super quick, let's take a glance at our trace ancestry. And we know that trace ancestry is just ancestry that's found in really small amounts. Um, you can't necessarily be guaranteed that it actually exists. It could just be noise, could just be tiny amounts. So I personally don't claim anything that is in the trace ancestry just because either it doesn't actually exist and it's just you know noise genetic noise or if it does exist it's so small and so far like so distant that you know eh, i don't claim that but you know we're just gonna look at it it's interesting to you know look at nonetheless so right off what i can see is that i have very 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 little trace ancestry which is cool so i only have one well point one percent broadly east asian um, and that gets me out the way. So let's go to my grandma. My grandmother has 0.2% Indonesian, Thai, Khmer, and Myanmar. 0.2% broadly Central and South Asian. And 0.2% Southern India and Sri Lankan. So it sounds like all three of these are connected. It probably all comes from the same one ancestor. Because all of this, if I'm not mistaken, is Southern Asian. Um, I think all these can be found in South Asia. So I'm feeling like that's probably all coming from one ancestor. So then if we go to my mom, well, what do we have here? 0.3% North African. And this lines up perfectly with my grandmother having 0.6% North African. That is exactly half. So like I was saying a second ago, I don't really pay attention to trace ancestry because it's small, but for something like that, it's confirmed because my mom can see it in her mom's ancestry and it's not in my grandma's trace ancestry. It's in her, you know, regular one. So um, so that I would take more seriously. Now, no, I wouldn't say for my mom to, or for any of us to go around claiming to be part North African, but I would, you know, in my head be like, okay, that's actually really there just as a cool to know thing. 
um so yeah she has that and then she also has 0.2 percent filipino and austronesian and so then when we get to my daughter it gets interesting again because she has 0.4 percent north african and she also has the same 0.2 percent filipino and austronesian that my mom has and she also has 0.2 percent central asian now me i don't have any of that so i don't know if it skipped from my mom to my daughter or if my daughter got it from her dad because she has more north african than my mom has so that leads me to believe that her dad also has it on his side i'm gonna double check with the parental inheritance thing to see if any of that is coming from him okay so here's where it gets even more interesting just as i thought the north african is coming from her dad but it's also coming from me so 0.2 percent comes from him and 0.2 percent comes from me so that's how she has you know more than my mom because she's getting it from her dad too but that's weird because it doesn't show up for me like on on my results i see no north african so she's getting it from me but it's not showing in my results so that's weird i would say you know that's faulty i don't believe it but as we see my mom and my grandma have it so if they have it it's very plausible that i would have it and that i would then pass it down to my daughter but why isn't it showing for me? I just assumed my mom and grandma have it. I didn't get it. And then my daughter would have probably gotten hers from her dad. But she got some from me. So apparently you can inherit something in it. Like as far as like uh, ethnicities go. And it not show up on your results. But you still pass it down? I, I don't know. I don't know. But that's what it's looking like for this. And then um, even her, her Filipino and Austronesian is showing that 0.1% comes from him and 0.1% comes from me. But then it's also saying that 0.1% East Asian comes from me. So I see where my 0.1% East Asian is. I don't see the Filipino and Austronesian, but again, that's something that my mom has. So somehow I also pass that down to her from my mom, even though it's not showing on my results. Um, that's so weird. And I guess the 0.1% East Asia that she inherited from me and her dad would be the same as the 0.2% Central Asia that we see in her Trace Ancestry because it, we don't see East Asia in her Trace Ancestry. We see Central Asia. But then over here in the Parental Inheritance, we don't see Central Asia. We see East Asia. So that's why I don't rely on the, you know, these Trace Ancestry things. They're such small amounts anyway. It's it's neither here nor there anyway. It's not going to affect her identity either way it goes. But uh, again, this is why I don't really pay attention to things that are very, very, very tiny amounts because it starts to get fuzzy and things start to not line up when the amount is so small. But yeah, so that is our Trace Ancestry in a nutshell. And last but not least, let's take a look at our additional ancestry regions. These are regions that reflect mixed ancestry or more recent migration in our ancestry. Um, so as you can see, uh, my mom, my grandma, and I, they're almost exactly the same. So under the category of Mexico and Central America, we have San Jose province, Costa Rica, and Managua, Nicaragua for all three of us. And, um, and that makes perfect sense because my great-grandfather, that's the exact city he was from, Managua. Um, Managua is like the capital of Nicaragua, and that's where he was from. Now, the San Jose, uh, the, the Costa Rica, I, I don't know where that's coming from. But, um, yeah, so all three of us have that. Now, where we differ is here at the bottom. So, my grandma has South America, Guyana. My mom has Afro-Caribbean peoples, Afro-Tobagonian, which is from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And then for me, I have Caribbean, Martinique. So then as we move over here to my daughter, she only has one match, and that is Guyana, just like my grandmother. So that's interesting that she got Guyana and South America like my grandma, but my mom and I didn't get it. And what's also interesting is that she got a specific place in Guyana. She got uh, the Memera, <laughs> Mahaika, uh, and my grandma didn't even get a particular place in South America so once again my daughter is getting like something specific that 
none of the rest of us got so I, that's so confusing that's so strange all right you guys and that brings us to the end of our video thank you so so much for watching i wanted to give a quick little fun fact on how i even got interested in doing these dna tests um and it all stems from like i used to do these comedy videos on instagram these skits and so this one guy commented one day he was like you know you're always appropriating black culture and just like you know complaining about things like that with me and i was like well i mean i'm creole i'm mixed with black and the guy was like well that little 15 percent don't count and then it made me kind of think and i was like well i don't know how black i am i just know that both my parents are mixed with black like i never really thought about all that but now that you say it like i can't really i don't have a monoracial parent or grandparent barely any grandparents a great grandparents like I, I was like dang you know i i don't know how black i am so that's what kind of made me interested in taking the test and i know i, I did ancestry first and those original results said i was 49 percent sub-saharan african and i was like okay I think this is black enough but yeah so that's what made me interested in it and uh so i mean i'm fascinated by them i know they're not always one thousand percent on the money they're not you know i wouldn't hang my whole identity on what a dna test says but they do provide clarity if you use it in conjunction with with, with what you already know of your family or with what other things you're able to trace through paper trails and you know piece together it's a very useful component you know along with other things uh, especially at the continental level like if you're using ancestry or 23andme those are the two most reliable ones at the continental level mines are basically identical on both like i wouldn't question anything at the continental you know your basic racial black white asian level but you know once it gets down to the regional and we're looking at specific ethnic groups and countries and things things might get a little iffy so that's where you might want to do a little extra paper uh, you know paperwork and and you know talking to family members and whatnot and i also highly suggest get the oldest person in your family to take the test because like everything was so much more clear when i got my grandma to take it like it got clearer each time i found out what i found out from my test than my mom did and i'm like okay that added more information to it than my grandma did and i'm like oh okay like it really added extra clarity and it's just i don't know it's super cool learning about yourself learning about your family that's all the more information we can give to our uh our offspring you know we, this is a luxury that our previous generations didn't have so i highly recommend it and 23andme ancestry i recommend both of those um for people who are creole or are trying to figure out if they are creole louisiana creole specifically or you know have reason to believe they might be or whatever the case i would say use ancestry because they have the creole communities and there have been what 500,000 over 500,000 people have creole communities on ancestry so i think for creole people or people who are trying to see if they are creole i would absolutely use ancestry and I do have my ancestry results as well. I have that video on my page. Um, I'll try to link it here. I've never done that before, but I'll try to link it here. Um, it's where you can see like I compare my ancestry and my 23andMe results. Also, I wanna give a disclaimer. I have um, shorts of me and my mom's DNA results. And I know there's gonna be some smart ass to be like, the, the information you have in the shorts don't align with the information you put in this video. You're lying. Well, in the shorts, I took it upon myself to put both um, my me and my mom's 23andMe and Ancestry results together. So we both did both tests. So I took an average of my Ancestry and 23andMe results and put it together and put it in that video. And I did the same for my mom. So those are averages of both our different results kind of averaged together. Whereas for this video, it was strictly 23andMe results, but they don't vary very much because the tests are like the, the results don't vary that much. So, but yeah, so before someone's like, she's lying. That's, that's why I just averaged them out because I thought that would be cool. I don't know. Um, so thanks again so much for watching, guys. Um, I love doing these DNA videos, especially this one because it's like me and all my immediate family. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for supporting my channel. Thanks for watching this video. And I will talk to you guys soon. Au revoir. Salut.